my statisticians. I hope you are having a lovely day. I'm Ashley, and this is Mostly Math. <laughs> um, and we're going to be answering, this is my first uh, video request. So someone asked for um, a summary video of the difference of means versus the mean of differences. So when to use which one and what situation. So I'm going to do a five minute video and a 15 minute video. This is the five minute. So if this is like way too vague or you want to see a full example done outright, uh, head to the 15 minute video and I will um, cover all the stuff there. So the biggest differences between uh, the difference of means versus the mean of differences uh, is how you set up your data. Um, so sometimes it's not even possible to do the mean of a difference, um, which is a matched pairs design. So in a matched pairs design, what you actually do is you try to have um, subjects that are either the same subject um, treated on twice uh, or you have um, two subjects that are very very similar and you just um, do one in like the treatment group and one in the placebo group kind of thing um, and then compare the two the difference between the two and the benefit of doing this is you actually sometimes get to control for variables that are typically confounded in um, a, in the, a, the two sample test, which would be the difference of the means. So um, can't always do that, but um, it is a really nice way to do a comparison test if it's if it's possible. Um, so uh, then on the other side of it, the difference of means, you end up with two independent samples. Um, you have a whole bunch of people that you haven't separated by age, gender, things that would confound your results. You have them all in one group and, you know, they've all been randomly assigned to the treatment. And then you have another group that was randomly assigned to the um, placebo. And then you just, there's no way to compare individuals within those groups. They're totally independent of each other. So you would just have the uh, mean from one group and the mean from the other group and you would try to uh, compare and contrast those two. So uh, just a quick little example that I have here is um, a paper airplane throwing contest kind of thing. So you have two different types of paper airplanes and you want to see which one flies the furthest. Um, so if you were to do a mashed pairs design, which you'd be calculating the means, the mean of the differences, <laughs> I have my S in the wrong place, the mean of the differences, um, what ends up happening is you would set up your data kind of like this, right? So you have uh, one person, hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm going to throw the, um, throw plane number one, and then I'm going to throw plane number two. And then what you're actually calculating and going to be measuring the average of, the mean of, is the difference. So plane one's distance minus plane two's distance. Just make sure you're consistent. You're always doing one minus two, one minus two, one minus two, one minus two. So Ashley has a difference of five. Carla throws plane one and then plane two. Joe throws plane one and then plane two. And then you actually just compare the differences between those two throws for each individual. And so your X bar is the mean of the differences, okay? Um, and then in that case, you would have a null hypothesis that, so typically, not always, but typically, the null hypothesis is that the mean of the differences is actually zero, right? Because we assume nothing exciting is happening. So we assume the null hypothesis is that both planes are the same. And then the alternative hypothesis, in this particular case, we haven't been led one way or the other. The alternative hypothesis is that uh, they're different. All right, so mean of the differences is zero. And then the alternative hypothesis is that it's not zero. Um, and so you're only calculating one sample mean, the mean of the differences. Okay, all right.
Option two, the difference of the means, right? This might be you don't have a lot of friends to do this test with and you're sad because you don't have any friends. Um, <laughs> you have the two planes and you throw them multiple times. So you throw plane one, one, two, three, four, five times, and then you throw plane two, five times. Um, obviously, this isn't the best designed example ever, um, but you get the point. So plane one would have its own x bar, and plane two would have its own x bar. So your null mu, is, mu sub one is equal to mu sub two, and the alternative is that they are not equal. Okay. All right, if you want more information or you want to see a full example gone through, then head to the 15-minute video of this. And good luck on your test. Bye.